Well, Mercury is a Mercurius is a disgusting a remedy for dis states that are just vile. The most evil smelling, putrid, dying remedy that we have, I reckon, pretty much. It's a very poisonous substance indeed. And fortunately we're aware of it these days, but times we weren't. Um, mercury just was used a lot because it has such profound antibacterial properties. Actually, it still goes into the mix of uh, inoculations. Mercury is often added, mercury is also often added as an antibacterial. Not a good plan. Very poisonous. Um, and of course, it's in amalgam in, your t in teeth. Mercury, again, not a good plan. Why are we still doing it? Why do we still do it? Well, because the NHS is pretty bankrupt and it can't afford the more expensive alternatives and it actually makes a very good filling. Unfortunately, it's highly toxic. It's partly why it's good filling because it stops bacteria getting in because it kills them on the way. But it is a very serious poison and therefore a very amazing remedy for all sorts of putrid, disgusting, decaying states. We were talking about silica and heparsulf in relation to boils, well mercury has a place too. A bit like silica, where the, the organism just doesn't have the vitality to finish the job and get rid of the poison, get rid of the of the bacteria, vanquish them and be finished with the with the with the with the boil or the sty or whatever it may be. It just keeps on going. Um and the throat is, is one of the key focus points of mercury, which of course affects every system in the body. But the throat is one of the first to get um, to get affected in the provings and one of the first areas of, of uh, therapeutic activity, we might think of it, in septic sore throats, stinky sore throats, dribbly sore throats, you know, dribbling, especially in the night, putting patches on the pillow that stink. Um, in fact, any disease that goes into any kind of stinky, dribbly, putrid state, we would think of mercury. Um, that probably covers the main idea in, the, in for the, the first aid usage of it. It is a true first aid remedy as well as, uh, as, well as a chronic uh, remedy. And the state of mind is also interesting. The mercury person feels that the world is out to get them. And they feel that people are out to get them too. And often the best defense is attack them, get them before they get you. So you know, we were talking about aconite and saying that aconite bypasses that stage. It goes into numbness and tingling, which is the stage of numbness, numbing out in a dangerous situation, in a situation of attack. A mercury is not like that. If it's got if it's got some vitality, its reaction will be to kill. Get rid of the aggressor. Get rid of the enemy. If the if the energy is not so good, it's it'll be to get away from them. And if the energy is completely depleted, they've got you. And there's nothing you can do about it. But it's a very do or die kind of situation. Um we were talking about the mouth and septic sore throat, sore throat, sore throats. We should also talk about teeth and gums. It's a pretty major here. Gum disease. You know, the dentist will shake his head dismally at you and say, you have gum disease, and if you don't do something about it, you're going to lose your teeth. So that's, you know, that's shouting for mercury, usually. Just any, any touch at all to the gums and they bleed. And once again, the dribbly map is very typical. There's often a taste in the map, which is metallic. It's another interesting uh, little uh, keynote of mercury, a metallic taste. And night time is always a time of aggravation for across the range of mercury symptoms. Mm.